We mentioned in a previous lecture that there was an experimental finding from the hydrogen emission spectrum which led us to believe that there was some sort of coupling between angular momenta in the hydrogen atom. For example, if we look at the alpha emission, the Lyman alpha emission line from the n equal 1, or sorry, the emission will be from the n equal 2 to the n equal 1 from introductory chemistry principles, we expect that the spectrum will be a single line. But what you observe is that the spectrum under high resolution conditions consists of two lines where you measure intensity versus frequency. So that means that some of these energy levels must be split. And we said they're split by an interaction between two angular momentum, or actually two spins, the intrinsic electron spin and the electron spin arises because you're going around the nucleus. So the orbital plus the intrinsic spin couple. So here we're going to consider that in a little more detail. So uh, why would they couple to begin with? I don't know. Um, we have to make up some explanation. Uh, one explanation is that, and this is a bad explanation, but we'll nevertheless use it. The electron spins on its own axis, and the electron has a charge of minus one. So if you have a spinning charge, and what you generate if you have a spinning charge is a magnetic field. So let's consider this uh, like a magnetic field dipole, and we'll give the symbol mu. Then this electron also is traveling. I mean, this is a really hokey explanation, but here's the nucleus. So as the electron travels, uh, it's spinning around the nucleus, and that also generates a magnetic field because it's a spinning charge. So these two magnetic fields act like little magnetic dipoles, and they could interact that way. You can make the same kind of argument looking at electric fields, uh, but the idea is that because you have two different kinds of spin, you have two different kinds of angular momenta, two different kinds of electric dipoles, two different kinds of magnetic dipoles, or whatever, and they then will interact. So that's the idea. Now the question is, how are we going to let them interact? Well, if you just have a single electron, uh, we can just have the electron intrinsic spin interacting with the orbital spin, and that would be fairly easy to handle. But what happens if you have more than one electron? So here we have, say, electron 1, which will have a certain spin, which we know is 1 half, and a certain orbital angular momentum L, which is given, actually we've been using uh, lowercase symbols for this. Uh, so let's write this as S and L. So S will be 1 half for a single electron, and L will depend upon what state it's in. L could be 0, 1, 2. And now we have the same thing for electron 2. So here we have the intrinsic spin, which is 1 half for a single electron, and then this may or may not be the same. Well, let's say it's in the same energy level n. So now we have two electrons, and how are they going to interact? Well, one way is to add up the spins for electron 1 and the spins for electron 2 to get a total spin, intrinsic spin. 2 is to add up the individual orbital angular momenta to get a, a sum of these, and then 3 is to interact S and L. So that's one way to do it, and that is called LS, or Russell Saunders, Russell Saunders coupling. First you add up the S's, then you add up the L's, and then you interact the sum of the S's and L's. A second way to do that is to first interact the S and the L, and that will give you, uh, let's call that a J value, and then you interact the J values for each electron. And perhaps not surprisingly, this is called J-J coupling. So what we're going to do in the rest of this lecture is to talk just about LS or Russell Saunders coupling, where we're going to add up the individual S's and the individual L's to get a sum, and then interact those to get a component, say we'll call that J.
we're not going to consider this case where we interact each individual S and L to get a J for each electron and then interact each J for the electron to get a big J. So we're not going to do that. Instead, we're just going to do the first scheme, and that will be called Russell Saunders coupling. So that's the introduction to spin over coupling. Let's go and take a look at Russell Saunders coupling.